Everyone wants to be able to predict the future prices of assets. Imagine if you knew back in 2013 that buying one Bitcoin at $67 would end up being worth over 60000 by 2024. Of course, no one can predict future prices perfectly because the market is largely influenced by emotion rather than facts. But many models have been proposed that supposedly help predict future prices based on fundamentals. One such model is the stock to flow model or the S to F for short, released by a user named Plan B in 2019. And it's still widely used today. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. Here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how the stock to flow model works, why it's such a big deal, and some criticisms of it. First, let's talk about the mysterious figure behind the stock to flow model. Plan B. Plan B is a synonymous financial analyst and Bitcoin enthusiast who first introduced the stock to flow model for Bitcoin in 2019. Now, unlike most financial analysts who work under their real names, Plan B chose to remain anonymous. This adds a bit of intrigue and mystery to his work, which could be part of why the model got so much attention. Plan B has a background in institutional investment and quantitative finance, which basically means he's used to working with complex financial models and the data. His skills in these areas easily combined with his passion for Bitcoin to create the stock to flow model, which tries to give a new way to understand and predict Bitcoin's price movement in the long term future. Despite being anonymous, he's gained a significant following on social media, where he continues to share insights and updates on the stock to flow model and just in Bitcoin in general. So by now you're wondering, what is the model? Well, to put it simply, the stock to flow model is a traditional way to measure the abundance and scarcity of a resource. Here's how it works. The model looks at two key things, the stock and the flow. The stock is the total amount of the resource that exists right now. Think of something being in stock at a store. This is like all the gold that's been mined and is out there in circulation. For Bitcoin, the stock is all of the Bitcoins that have already been mined and are in circulation. The flow, on the other hand, is the amount of the resource that is produced over a specific period, usually one year. So for gold, the flow would be how much gold is mined in the next 365 days or the next year and is added to the market. For Bitcoin, the flow is the number of new Bitcoins created through the mining process each year. In order to understand why stock and flow are important, we need to understand why scarcity is important. It all comes down to supply and demand. So let's start with a simple example. Imagine you have a rare collectible card and there's only 10 of them in the world. Because those cards are so rare and have some cultural extrinsic value, lots of people want those cards. The high demand combined with the low supply makes the card very valuable. Now, if there were millions of these cards out there, they wouldn't be worth nearly as much because they'd be easy to get. Scarcity means that resources are limited, whether it's time, money, raw materials, or even bitcoins. When something is scarce, people are usually willing to pay more for it because it's harder to come by. And also there are less sellers competing against each other to force prices down. When it comes to Bitcoin, its scarcity is built into the way that it is created. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins, making it a finite resource actually unlike gold. The stock to flow model believes that as more people learn about Bitcoin and want to own some, the limited supply means that the value can increase. The model expresses this value in a ratio. The stock to flow ratio is calculated by dividing the stock by the flow. So if there's 185,000 tons of gold in the world, otherwise known as the stock, and 3,000 tons are mined each year, also known as the flow, the stock to flow ratio is calculated by dividing 185,000 by 3,000, which gives us 62. Another way to think about it is that it would take 62 years of production to get to the current stock, and this ratio is expressed as 62. Now, how does this apply to Bitcoin? It's a little more complicated, actually, because Bitcoin has a unique feature called halving events. Every four years, the number of new Bitcoins produced in each block gets cut in half. This reduces the flow and increases the stock to flow ratio. Remember that the ratio is found by dividing the stock by the flow to find out how much it would take to match the current stock with the new flow. So if the speed is cut in half every four years, that makes Bitcoin more scarce over time and increases the ratio. At the time of Plan B's article in 2019, the Bitcoin stock to flow ratio was 25, which he claimed was high enough to include it in monetary goods category, just like gold. Towards the end of 2024, Bitcoin's ratio is about 62, which matches that of gold. So far, the model seems to be holding up, and if you look at this chart, it roughly matches. 
The gray line is the predicted price based on the stock to flow model and the colors are the actual Bitcoin price. Though we have to note that the prediction placed the price of Bitcoin in the 2020 halving at $55,000 in May that year. However, the real price was 9000 It wasn't almost until a year later, in March 2021, that the price of Bitcoin did hit 55000 The next halving is estimated to be in 2028, which would increase the ratio even more as the incoming supply will drop by half. In the stock-to-flow model, the projected value of Bitcoin is at least a million dollars, which a few big names like Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood agree with, but many analysts disagree and claim that even if it hits that, it won't be sustainable. As Plan B said in his article, only time will tell. Another piece of evidence that Plan B uses is the power law relationship, which basically states that when one quantity changes, another quantity changes proportionally. The example he gave is that when a Bitcoin halving occurred, Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio doubled and the market value increased 10 times. On the other side, each of the bear market crashes in 2011, 2014, and 2018, also the prices of Bitcoin dip roughly 80%, despite the price of Bitcoin being roughly a 10, a thousand, and $10,000 respectively. So the power law relationship shows that the scales remained proportionally consistent. However, the 2022 bear market did not align with this model. Plan B predicted Bitcoin would hit $100,000, but it actually dipped below $16,000 by November 2022, losing about 60% that year, breaking the power law relationship. This drop was largely thanks to the explosion of Terra USD, the FTX exchange, and global inflation fears, which sent the entire market plummeting for a period of time. But that's a good reminder that the model doesn't account for external factors. This criticism is echoed by many people. Economist Alex Kruger, Blockstream CEO Adam Back, and Ethereum co-founder Vitalik have pointed out that the model is heavily based on historical data. They argue that just because the model has fit Bitcoin's past price movement doesn't guarantee it will continue to do so in the future. Markets can change, and past performance doesn't always predict future results. Vitalik also mentions that the model doesn't account for psychology behind investing in adoption, which isn't something that anyone can predict as it's so heavily influenced by macroeconomic factors, like inflation, regulatory changes, or wars. Another major criticism of this model is that it assumes people will want to keep buying Bitcoin, and we just can't know that'll happen. If you think back to the example of the rare collectible cards, you can imagine that more cards might be created every year, meaning that the stock will increase. But remember that the reason for the value is that there's limited supply, so if more are created, it will become less rare and perhaps each one will lose its value because less people will want to own it. The stock-to-flow model assumes that actually as more are created, this means more people want to buy them, not less. It gets away with this assumption because Bitcoin, unlike a rare collectible card, might have utility. A collectible card is cool to have, maybe there's some extrinsic value, but it just sits in someone's collection and only has the value if someone is willing to buy it. The vision for Bitcoin is that it becomes a store of value in itself and is used as a currency, which means people will need to keep exchanging it for goods and services. That's what it means to have utility. You can do something with it. The vision is unfortunately just that right now, a vision. At this point, Bitcoin isn't really being used as a currency in most cases. It's more like a stock or a bond. And because Bitcoin doesn't have intrinsic value, in other words, it's only worth what other people are willing to pay for it, it functions like a stock too. So Bitcoin is actually more like a collectible card than gold at this point. Gold has intrinsic value because we can use it to create other things like jewelry, art, and even electrical connectors and technology. So gold's demand is based on its utility. Until Bitcoin has some utility like this, even if it's just a widely accepted currency to pay for groceries or rent or other services, Bitcoin's demand will be entirely dependent on its perceived value. Consider the stock to flow model as one of the many tools in your toolkit. Ignoring all the other models, market conditions, and external factors could lead to incomplete or misguided investment decisions. As Bitcoin matures, its market evolves, and regulations are cemented. The assumptions underlying the stock-to-flow model might not hold true. The model's heavy reliance on historical data means it might not accurately predict future market behavior, especially in a rapidly changing environment. Let us know in the comments below if you want us to make a video about any of the other models that are out there. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you learned something. And most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.